on. We are going to review the concept of the Bohr model and the Rydberg series. As you can see in this slide, the Bohr model assumes that electrons around the nucleus travel in a very well-defined orbit. Each orbit is associated with a quantum number n, where n equals 1 is this, this, the, no, the orbit closest to the nucleus, n equals 2 is the one that follows far moving away, and we continue on and on until we can go to n could be even infinity. In this model as well, we can use that to predict transitions that happens between different energy levels. For example, in this particular diagram, we have the infrared series in which n could be a higher number and all of them will end in equal n equals to 3. When we have a transition from a high orbit to a lower orbit, such as in this particular example, n6 to n3, the energy that is released results in the emission of a photon. Similarly, if we have an electron in a high orbit and, and there is a change in our transition that goes to n equals 2, this will result in an emission of a photon that is in the visible range. A third example, if we have an electron in a higher orbit and there is a transition to a final orbit in which n equals 1, this will result in, in an emission of a photon that is in the ultraviolet region. So this concept of, uh, of the Bohr model could be directly associated with an energy diagram. In an energy diagram, the y-axis will represent the energy, and the x-axis represents different possible transitions. Comparing with the left side of the screen, we see that we have a series, we have several series here, in which the arrows will represent different transitions. We have an infrared series in which the end final is going to be equal to 3, as you can see the cursor here. The end final is going to be equal to 2 for the visible series, corresponding to the energy level. And the end final is going to be equal to 1 for the UV series, corresponding to this energy level that we have here. We can also see that the uh, ultraviolet series is the one that implies or has a largest change in energy. The visible series is the one that follows, and the infrared series of these three is the one that has the less change in energy level. Respectively, the photons of these different transitions will be higher in energy for the ultraviolet, middle energy for the visible, and lower energy for the infrared. The third component of this model refers to association of this energy, energy diagram or the orbit model with the emission spectrum. As we can see in this particular representation of the emission spectrum that shows different wavelengths on the axis, we can associate each of the transitions with a specific line in the emission spectrum of this particular case, which is the hydrogen atom. We see that the, the the transition that has the largest energy change, the longest arrow, has the shortest wavelength, and as we move to longer wavelengths, this will correspond to transitions that, that basically have a shorter change in energy. So having said that, and if we think about these observations, many years ago, centuries ago, this, this was the only information that was available. So by observation, it was possible to associate this particular behavior of wavelengths with specific quantum numbers. This specific quantum numbers then has to relate an n number or n numbers to the specific positions in the different spectra that we have here, the ultraviolet, the visible, and the infrared series. This expression is called the Rydberg series, which is predicted by the Rydberg equation. That says that the reciprocal of the wavelength it's going to be equal to a constant times 1 over the square of an n final, referred to, referring to the Bohr model, minus 1 over n initial, referring to the Bohr model. And this is the series for the emission spectrum. 
wavelengths. And if we think of the association of wavelength with energy, then we can predict that for a hydrogen atom or for anything that has a, sim a similar behavior to a hydrogen atom, such as helium plus that has only one electron or lithium two plus that has on only one electron, we can basically use a, a derivation from this equation to calculate delta E as final energy minus initial energy. And after replacing some constants, we can basically come up with an expression that associates the atomic number, which is the charge of the nucleus of the atom, and the n final and n initial of the transition that is in question. We see that this expression is extremely similar to the Rydberg equation, but now we are not using wavelength, we are predicting energy. We can also see, as indicated at the bottom of this slide, that a uh, divisible series, the n final is always going to be equal to 2 for the hydrogen atom, and the n initial will be something larger than that, 3, 4, 5, etc. For the UV series, the n final is going to be equal to 1, and the n initial is going to be something larger than 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. And for the infrared, which is not indicated in this slide, n final is going to be equal to 3, and n initial is going to be to something higher than 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. One point to remember is that this expression is applicable to any atomic system that has one electron. That's the only con the condition that we need to remember. Now that we have reviewed the concept of the Bohr model and Rydberg series, we are going to apply these concepts to a problem of chapter 7. The problem reads, the lithium 2 plus ion emits one line in the visible spectrum, which refers to the range from 400 to 700 nanometers. If n initial equals 5, what is the wavelength in nanometers of the emission? If n initial equals 5, what is the n final for the wavelength in the visible range? So take a few minutes to think about this problem, propose a solution, work the solution, and after that, let's compare your and my solution. To solve this problem, what we will do first is confirm that this is a one electron system. We will then uh, consider that the visible spectrum covers from 400 to 700 nanometers and calculate wavelengths for various possible NF values and uh, combine with the N initial value equals to five until we find one wavelength that is in the visible range. To do this step, the second step, we will need to do an iteration that involves three components. First, we calculate the delta E using the Rydberg equation for a given NF value. Then from that delta E, we will calculate the corresponding wavelength, and then we will con continue repeating the calculations until we find the value of the values that, are, uh, that fall within the visible range. Okay, to solve this problem, what we're going to need to do is to first confirm that we have one electron system. So lithium, which has an atomic number of three, if it loses two electrons, we are forming lithium two plus, those two electrons. And what we're going to need to do then is we're going to take this, uh, take advantage of this to understand what is the, uh, that we, well, number one, we have one electron left. So that means that we have one electron system. We can use the Bohr model and the Rydberg series to make our prediction. The next step is going to be to calculate delta E. And delta E, for that we need to use the expression that associates uh, the different quantum, num quantum numbers, n, sub n final and n initial, with delta E. And the expression is And this also has here the 
dz squared, the atomic, the atomic number, and final squared minus z squared, and initial squared. So if we basically uh, define what the values are for this particular transition, we have that n initial is going to be 5, and the possible nf finals then will be 4, 3, 2, or 1. We also need to keep in mind that the atomic number for, for a lithium is 3, so that's going to be relevant because z squared is going to be equal to 9. So let's calculate that for the first case, the case for which uh, nf is equal to 1. So we're going to basically do then delta E is going to be equal to z squared is 9, and final is 5 squared, uh, and final is 1 squared, Nine divided by n initial squared, which is five squared. And if we solve this particular situation, we're going to have that delta e is going to be equal to minus one eight eight times ten to the minus seventeen joules. This indicates to us that this is the energy that is being released, is the energy of the photon that we have being emitted in this particular system. Now, from the delta E, what we will do is we will going to calculate the, the lambda. I will erase these expressions here because we, we no longer need them for this example. And we will use now the expression that relates delta E is going to be equal to minus the energy of the photon, which is also equal to minus hc over lambda. If we solve for lambda, lambda is going to be equal to minus hc divided by delta e. And in this particular example, we have 6.62 times 10 to the minus 34, and the speed of light is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, and finally the delta E is the value that we just calculated, which is 1.88 times 10 to the minus 17 joules. I'm not writing the dimensions, but just keep in mind that h is given in joules second. The speed is given in meters per second, so, and delta e is given in joules. So the, at, at the end, what we're going to have here is the solution in meters. And for this particular example, then, lambda is going to be equal to 1.05 times 10 to the minus 8 meters which is equivalent to a total of 10.5 nanometers. The question is, is this value in the visible range? And the answer is no. So what we need to do is we need to continue trying out different values on, of uh, n sub f until we find the right value for this particular, for, to answer this question. So let's try the, the, the value that will fit the, this description of producing a transition that emits a photon in the visible range, then has to be a different number, not necessarily one. So let's do that. And after we continue doing this iteration of calculating energies and calculating wavelengths, we will come up to a conclusion that only one of these numbers is going to be resulting in a photon that has a wavelength in the visible range.
And that that is going to be cor that's going to correspond to a case in which nf is equal to 4 for that particular situation the delta e is going to be equal to minus 4.14 times 10 to the minus 19 joules and the lambda associated with that is going to be equal to 450.6 nanometers. So this is going to be the correct answer for this particular problem. So now that you have seen the solution for a, a couple of transitions, uh, this table summarizes some of the transitions that could be observed for the same n initial equals 5, the possible NF finals, which is any number lower than 5, the corresponding energy calculated with the Reaper series, the corresponding wavelength calculated with the Reaper series, and then the conversion of wavelength from meters to nanometers. And as we can see here, the only solution is that one in which NF final is 4, and the wavelength for that is 450 nanometers.